We running? We're running. Oh, hey. We're running. Light it up. Cook podcast. I'm your host, Chris Wansettler, and I am joined by my three buddies. I'm going to introduce them ranked by who I think can carry the most bags of groceries in from the truck <laughs> in one trip. I'm not first. Oh my God. We have Corey Cole, Colton Heinegger, and Andy Heiser. Mm. And that is solely, solely based on proper form. Because I think you would not carry a shitload of grocery bags. I'm no because it's bad for. Well, that's, because it's bad for. I, well, I well I appreciate where you're going with that. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just strongly disagree <laughs> that you're going to get into Ar- one argue trip. this. <laughs> argue this. Who who uh, who can carry the most? I should be at the top of that list. <laughs> hmm. Man, I'm pretty good at it. Yeah, I've I've mastered it. But I, I'll be honest, I've started using a wagon recently. Yeah, it's cheating. Yeah, that's yeah. cheating. Wow. <laughs> but we do a lot of we do bulk shopping now. I guess so liquid liquid nothing smoke. has bags. Well, liquid smoke's done to you. I know. <laughs> She's <laughs> throwing just punches, cheat, just Ouch. cheating everywhere. Just cheating everywhere now. <laughs> now we're using wagons. Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! Um, yeah. So today we are talking about heirloom recipes. So we're like bringing it back from the past. We're honoring those who came before us. Some still with us, some are not with us. So you might see some tears in this episode if you're watching the video. I might encourage you guys to listen only to this episode because (laughs) nobody wants (laughs) to see a grown man cry. (laughs) But yes, we are are talking about those recipes that have been passed down through our generations. And again, we are honoring, you know, we are practicing like the full space and time commensality, Mm -hmm. like sharing meals Mm -hmm. with um, some family members who are no longer with us um, in most of our cases. If not all, I don't know. I don't know what you guys brought today. So it's a little bit more of a serious episode. We're going to be a little bit more down to earth, a little bit more somber, I think, after we talk about our our meals of the week. Mm -hmm. So what did did you guys taste? Hit me with it. Well, I'm, uh, this was a a social media post. You can go out and see. It's already been out there. I've already talked about it, but I had, I found the last, as everyone knows who has a chest freezer, you'll find roasts that are at the bottom (laughs) of that chest freezer. I found a pheasant (laughs) that I'm embarrassed to say is from 2016. Jeez. Uh, If it's not freezer burnt, you can still use it. I need to talk to Updeck and see if it's safe to eat. (laughs) I don't know. um, I don't know about that old, but um, go on. But my, uh, no, you're good. My, um, my very first deer, um, it was a buck. The buck, and the wind buck. The wind buck. It, it check out from field to table on YouTube. You can see a really cool video or watch me dance around like a child, uh, and then get to see the. We deer were, that we're I got. a little bit loony. It was it was fun. It was, <laughs> it was a story. It was, it was an epic it was a really adventure. Cool yes. Adventure, but um, it was my very last. So it's the very last piece of meat from that deer. Oh jeez. Um, and in typical uh, fashion, I wanted to like honor that the best I could, and so yeah. I went ahead and picked the. Um, the recipe that I've just had the most success with, with my family and also, um, is my favorite, probably my, probably my favorite venison recipe. And it mm. is that Hank Shaw's, um, coming back again, Italian roast. Hank Shaw. Wow. <laughs> so, um, so I, I made that, our, our um, hero. Hank yeah. Shaw. And it was, it was really good. It was really cool to kind of finish that off. I mean, I was, I mean, shoot a hundred, a hundred plus pounds of meat for myself and a big my guy. family. It was awesome. Um, and Andy does CrossFit. I do nothing, and like we needed a third random guy oh, yeah, to yeah. help get it in oh, the back man. of the truck. And he was he was a very nice man. Showed up, he and was grabbed into the it. Gnarliest part of the day, he was and, into it, and just grabbed it and threw it in the back of my truck. It was awesome. I'm just um, like avoiding those hindquarters. <laughs> and that, this guy was that, in it. That uh, what's uh, that? That gland? Like, yeah. Oh, he was wearing. I was it. avoiding it like the plague. Yeah, and he, he was just like, Yoink, let's yeah. get it. <laughs> um, that's awesome. So yeah, so that was that was really fun to yeah. to have that. Um, you know, again, that's a that's a recipe I'll continue to use, but it was yeah. really cool because that really the deer is now gone. Yeah. So that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Just got the mount now. Yeah, I just got the mount. It's fun in the, the video and the tattoo. <laughs> yeah. That tattoo. Yes, <laughs> yes. How about you two? I did sous vide steaks. Um, nice. 
they were good. Like you know, I I, I talked before. It's uh, I'm new to it, mm-hmm. so I'm trying to learn it. Mm-hmm. Um, but as soon as I got it, I was like, I got to do something with these, uh, this. I yes. don't want to sit on the counter and you know forget about it. And I just spent the money on it. Amazon was running a deal, and mm-hmm. I grabbed it. Um, so I mean, they turned they turned out pretty pretty good. I mean, I I enjoyed it. Um, so, uh, but yeah, nice, it's a good good first run. I will say, I think I will go ahead and do all of the seasoning in the bag the next time. Yeah. yeah. This is, makes yeah. a difference. Oh yeah, for sure. Sprig of rosemary, oh. some butter. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't like this time. Yeah. Okay. So trying to get the right seasoning and the yeah. butter on at the end was not successful. No. But it was still good. Yeah. So yeah. Cause when yeah, it's, a, it's such a quick sear when you're yeah. done, like yeah. you really don't have time to get that you want yeah. the rosemary in incorporated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I get it. Yeah. Well, I'm doing a Canadian goose jerky this week. Yes. It's, uh, yes. I can't say I all made right. it because it's it's in the process right okay. now. Um, but all except plans. Yeah, plans <laughs> to make goose jerky. It's in yes. the refrigerator. It's going to be brined, or not brined, seasoned tomorrow morning. Nice. Um, which uh, there will be a jerky episode in the future. So it is coming stay up. tuned. It but is planned. One note on that is... Uh, I've always made jerky with a dehydrator, um, and uh, that's what it seems like everybody tends to use. But Chris turned me on to smoking my jerky mm-hmm. and making it that next way, level. and it's next level. And I so good. I think you uh, did jerky a couple weeks back or a month or so, month or so ago, and uh, on your Traeger, right? Yeah, I yeah. do. Yeah. So, so my my buddy Mitch turned me on to smoking jerky, and I'll never do it another way well and i, I don't think so i will either. either this year i want to i've got I think we've talked about this a little bit but I, I have a i have a couple pieces that as you guys know in the past i've been re- re- reluctant would be a nice way of saying to, to make jerky out of it just mainly because i like to make you know meals out of my yeah. venison mm-hmm. but um you know this year there's quite a bit in the freezer so you know i'd be like i'd be willing to you try gotta it have but i don't want to do snacks. it uncert i don't want to do it uncircum uh so uncircum- unsupervised yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> i don't want to do it a whole nother direction <laughs> right um is, you know i'm i'm like as the sous vide is new to you the smoker is not my friend i am not sure how to do that but sure. i would gladly bring over and and work with one yeah. of the two of you guys on Absolutely, doing yeah. that so uh, maybe we can, we can line that up. Yeah. Well, and part of the reason I'm doing jerky in the first place, this is maybe a little bit of a tangent here, but um, a lot of hunters in general in the community can get a bad rep sometimes. Uh, so we all, everyone here tries to do things for the landowners that mm-hmm. we, uh, you know, that oh, yeah. let us hunt their land. And right. uh, the landowner specifically that let me hunt his land this year for goose said he's never had goose before. And, and jerky is a great oh, thing to just mm-hmm. make somebody to, uh, you know, give them a little taste of, something Wait. wild they've never had so. Dude, right. with goose goose with goose <laughs> uh, with goose especially it's pastrami or jerky right are yeah. my go-tos and like goose jerky is just something about it i don't know it's just so it is like i almost prefer tender. that to goose yeah or I, I almost prefer goose to venison yeah like it's that good mm. i'm with you there both Chris. of those definitely above beef mm. there's something about the fat in beef that just in my opinion doesn't turn to jerky very well like yeah. I'm just, I'm not a fan of like a fatty beef jerky. Mm-hmm. I think once you have venison or goose jerky, beef jerky is just not the same. It's just different. It's weird. Mm-hmm. We're, we're getting off topic. That, that's yes. a future yeah. episode. It's coming up. <laughs> yeah. It is planned. We will talk about it in great detail later. Um, and I guess it's my turn now, isn't mm-hmm. it? So we did some venison goulash the oh. other day. What is and that? And... It's a fun word. Well, throw back to the chili episode. We've been throwing back to that a lot lately. And somebody brought up to me that putting noodles in your chili turns it into goulash, goulash. technically. Yeah. And I believe in that episode, I just referred to it as chili mac. Right. But someone else was like, no, that's goulash. Yeah. Okay. And I, I believe it. I, I'll get behind it. But dude, this goulash was good. I do love some goulash. Yes. It was just, it's like, a, it's a tomato base. It's almost chili. Just without all the crazy vegetables and mm-hmm. okay. there were no chili peppers in it. So it wasn't like technically, technically chili. chili according to Corey's <laughs> <laughs> definition online. <laughs> uh, dude, the kids just smashed it. So this awesome. venison, this venison goulash will be on like our cooking for picky eaters because my kids just annihilated it. And they okay. typically are shy about things with like tomatoes 
and a really funny story about this goulash. Like my kid, like my, my oldest, he's about four right now. He is like very texturally averse. Like he doesn't like, he doesn't like weird textures. He really doesn't like tomatoes. And there were some obvious tomato chunks in this goulash. And at one point in the meal, he looked up and he's like, dad, I'm eating tomatoes and I don't even care. <laughs> That's awesome. It was like the funniest thing that he's ever said. Nice. So like, um, made yeah, you feel good too. I did. Yeah. You're like yeah. I made that. Well, it's, and it's a meal that he actually ate. So yeah. I'm like, when? Yeah. And it's venison. When? Mm, for sure. That's awesome. <laughs> it was good. It was, it was, uh, very nice. It was very nice. So moving off the, uh, our current foods of the week, we actually had some cool conversations on Instagram with a dude named Calder and out of the blue, he was just like, Hey, you guys should do like some guests on pretty soon. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're working on it. Like we, we, we're still learning here. We're still getting comfortable with this whole setup, getting comfortable with the mics in front of us and the cameras looking at us. Uh, I said, once we get used to the the process, like we'll, we'll bring a, a fifth per- person on mm-hmm. and like, there's only so many ways our brains can can go right now and adding a guest right now is just too much for me mm-hmm. but then after that he was like yeah you guys should get on like your your parents or your grandparents like mm. get some people on that like inspired you to get cooking like like what mm-hmm. like got you into cooking oh man and I was, like, I was like, dude, like my mom would be a nervous wreck. <laughs> well, I was like, dude, we got the episode episode planned, and like we're recording it right now, and like I feel like these recipes that we brought today yeah. are, yeah, those people that encouraged us to get into the kitchen to mm-hmm. to play around with it all. That could almost be a two four episode if we decided to do that, because that could almost be like a Mother's Day mm-hmm. special oh, type yeah. thing. Because uh, I would. Has not hesitate to say that probably most for the most part our moms had at least something to do with it. Like my mom is yeah. an incredible cook, um, you know, and people have often told her that she should open a steak oh, nice. um, restaurant that only does steaks. So well, every time you talk about your your deer season and she's got her her chili cooking or mm-hmm. what yeah, I forget what else she soup. makes potato, potato soup. soup. Yeah. It's like oh man, I want to try that real bad. Um, See, I don't, I don't know who, who you guys brought with you today, uh, but yeah, we're definitely going to talk about heirloom recipes. So the recipes that we either grew up with or recipes that like, hey, I've got this loved one and like this is what they are known for. Um, I've, I've got some stuff in the cupboard here I'm going to go get. Mm-hmm. So I asked my mom for some help, like digging some stuff up. And actually the, the two cookbooks we've got on display are like legit cookbooks that my family <laughs> made. That's awesome. Are you this in that? Are you, are you, is, no, no. So this is our, okay. our this is my mom's cousins. I, I okay. got the notes right here. I had to write it down. Uh, yeah, so my mom's, my mom's aunt made this book. So it's our extended family. They're okay. out mostly on the, on the West coast up North. So we don't really see this side of the family all that much, but they legit made this cookbook. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then this book right here is, so I've got, um, she is my dad's, Step aunt, I believe. I, I, I think I'm saying that right. Uh, Millie Troyer, she is like a legend up in Marion, Indiana. But she just she she owned a camp up in Canada for ages, like such a long time. And like this, it's a cheap little cookbook, but it's like full of like crazy cool like outdoor cooking, like just the craziest stuff ever. But like she legit made that cookbook. That's awesome. That's and awesome, on yeah. top of that. My mom gave me. Oh wow! Oh my Jeez. goodness! <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Mom, do you have and any I was, recipes I was like talking about from that. our you family? These old boxes and stuff." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got six of them. I said, here. "Mom, do you have <laughs> recipes?" And like, I kid you not, these are just loaded. Wow! wow. Those are handwritten. Ones All too. of them are handwritten. So this is like, this is Dude. legendary. That's awesome. And like they're cool. so, I mean, it's, it's a lot from family. Mm-hmm. I think these two are specifically family. And then these are just a, a big hodgepodge of like friends and family and mm-hmm. clippings, but like so much history, like in these boxes. Little did you I know. I mean, the freaking boxes are old. Yes, <laughs> dude, I love this old metal tin. It is yeah, such a, I, I cannot wait to dig through these like in great detail oh for sure that's um, awesome and spoiler alert there there may or may not be some 
something um, cooking in this this is in this realm foreshadowing um, in, <laughs> in a merch department here on okscook.com. Uh, but yeah, so this is what my family provided me. Uh, but I've got one specific that I that I really want to talk about. Um, but someone else can go first if they would rather, or, or should I kick it off? What do, what do you guys say? Who's um, going to be the least emotional? <laughs> probably, well, probably a tie between the two of us, but I'll be okay. Um, uh, so I, that's awesome. I love the boxes. I'll, I'll go ahead and kick this off with my, um, the recipe. If you, if everyone in my family already knows which recipe is going to happen without even knowing <laughs> that this is happening, they'll know which recipe this is going to be because, um, on my mother's side of the family, this uh, dish has been a part of almost every meal that we've had our entire childhood growing up. And I uh, called my mom actually on the way to the recording today just to try mm. to get some other like, hey, how long has this been in the family and how long has she been doing this? And um, my mom confirmed with with her sister, my aunt, um, that this is actually something that she learned from her mother. So my grand, my, oh, my great cool. grandmother yeah. who taught my grandmother how to, how to make this. And so, That's super cool. um, what I love about this dish is kind of going back home, back to the chili episode again. It's a great opportunity to have a dish that can be its own standalone dish as well as a side dish. Mm-hmm. Um, keep in mind, like going back to what this is, um, this dish came out of the great, Dep- great depression. Um, this is a time when you had to make food stretch and, mm. Um, you had to find ways to make like hearty meals out of mm-hmm. very few ingredients. Um, and so uh, I keep dancing around the name because it's it's very basic in, in its structure and that's that it's just macaroni and cheese. Um, and but it's not macaroni and cheese. It's like grandma's mac, but it's grandma's macaroni and cheese. Yeah. And it's actually referred to as Gma's macaroni and cheese now in the family. Yes. But um, this is the actual card. Um, so her recipe card that she wrote out. Um, and I actually had to pry this away from my brother, um, because he makes it to this day. So he has kind of taken on the realm of like continuing to make this. And the reason why it seems like it's just mac and cheese, how hard could it be? It's actually a white roux macaroni and cheese. So for those of you who understand how hard it is to make a roux, um, don't, it's a, I, again, I can't even begin to like explain the process, but roux is, is, um, it starts typically like, so with this, it starts with a lot of. Um, flour and m- butter basically and, and you have to continually work it hmm. otherwise it'll burn mm-hmm. so it's a it's a dish that like I can vividly to this day see my grandmother in the in the kitchen oh man just making this roux and making the macaroni and cheese and I've you know my mom made macaroni and cheese growing up like casseroles and stuff and it didn't seem <laughs> like it was that hard but grandma always worked <laughs> real hard at it yeah and yeah. that's because this recipe oh, man. requires a lot of time and a lot of attention hmm. Um, and, uh, according to my brother, cause again, I've yet to even make this because I, I, I will screw it up. Um, he has had to do a lot of practice to make this happen. Juice. So, but it's a very creamy. So, uh, for those of you who have never had like a, a roux based macaroni and cheese or white macaroni and cheese like that, it's, um, if you've gone to Panera bread, that would be give you like your more like generic. If you've had their macaroni and cheese, that would give you more of a generic version of like mm. what this would taste like, but it's extremely rich and hearty. I love it. Um, and it's one of those things that because it starts literally from just b- melting butter in a pan, adding in the flour, and like again, if you're looking at the basic ingredients and going back to when this was created, because hmm. um, it's 12 slices of American cheese, like who, <laughs> like who puts that? But when in yeah. and like when times are tough, That's what like, they had. you can't get fancy cheese. You know, you get it's 12 yeah. slices of American cheese yes. um, is what goes into that setup of this to oh, for man. hers to make her version of it. So, um, you know, this is one of those things, guys. That like, like. I will never get it again the way that she did it, but we can get relatively close when, when Tommy does it. But like, man, yeah, I was going to ask like how close is he to, uh, he's gotten good. He's yeah. gotten very, very good at it. But, um, and my mom can make it too. Um, my aunts have tried as well. Um, <laughs> I, I've said there's, there's been some that have been better than others. Um, <laughs> yeah. I would say, um, but for the most part, it's one of those That's things awesome. where like we can get close, but it'll probably never be the same. Yeah. You, you can tell the difference like no. based on mm-hmm. who, who has made that dish for sure. Like mm-hmm. I get it. So, but, um, yeah, I made it through. Who's next? <laughs> <laughs> like is that, be, here's a question yeah, for Andy. Is, is that one, so that's what you're on the fourth generation of passing that down. Yeah. Is that one where you guys have all stuck like religiously to the recipe card or have you guys tried to 
tweak anything or change anything on it. This is one that we stuck religiously to it. And again, if uh, it's one of those where I'd be interested to have all of us try it mm-hmm. to make oh, it because to make the like to we eat, try to make it or just to try, to eat it. Well, eat, well, we can eat it for sure, <laughs> but like to try to make it because. Okay, okay. Like it's one of those things. Like when you read through the recipe card, like like it doesn't say on here, but like basically you, you have to, like the you know, she makes the two cups of macaroni, and that's usually already cooked and ready on the set aside. Um, but then the margarine, like she literally starts with the four tablespoons of margarine, or you can use butter and flour, and and she starts, and it's just like it's this constant movement to mm-hmm. keep it. Is, are there a bunch of details on like how to do it right, or is it just like? It's like, like like on the Great British Bake Off where they're just like make this. It's literally melt margarine in saucepan. Blend but she in doesn't flour, like warn you like if you do stu- if you do stir X, Y, Z it, wrong. Stir in the milk like uh, okay, okay. It, it says cook stirring constantly. Okay. So uh, and um, you know this this lady's attention to detail is like second to none. Sweetest lady that's ever walked the planet for sure. Um, so hmm. you're definitely downplaying how like. <laughs> this is downplaying how hard it is to actually do well. Um, but awesome. uh, yeah, um, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, in th- it's one of those things when you read it, you're like, oh, it'll be fine. But yeah. it's, it's, it, <laughs> it takes a bit, maybe a couple runs at it to get it right. Yeah, but, it might yeah. be biting off more than you could chew. Yeah. Nice, I love it. Um, we all, I'll go ahead and go next. Um, I don't know if you guys are prepared uh, mentally and emotionally. Uh, so my grandma, she passed away a while ago and I did not realize that like this was her recipe and like we've been eating this recipe. Like every time we go to the lake, somebody makes this side dish and it's calico beans and it's basically ground meat with beans and just sugar. And it's such a phenomenal like side. It's just, it's fatty, it's sweet, it's tangy, just full of beans. And it's just like, it was the staple, the lake staple. Like, ev- like legit, I cannot think of a time we went to the lake where we did not have calico beans. And like, I legitimately, like, like when I talked to my mom and aunts to get this recipe, this was on the top, and it's it's handwritten by her. And you know, similar to Andy's recipe, like I got this card from my aunt, and she said, you know, protect this with <laughs> your life. Correct. You know, because my my grandma's not with us anymore, and it's it's in her handwriting, and it's just it's a special. It's 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 a treasure. It's like legit, like the heirloom, um, among with <laughs> all the other mm. uh, recipes we have from her. But it's like it's it's treasured possession that that my grandma wrote um, in this dish. Like, and now that I know that is her recipe, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. every time I have those beans, now it's just like it's flashback to mm-hmm. like sitting down with grandma and you know eating this these calico beans. And is this sort of cold. cold? Kind of warm, yeah. yeah okay. Straight from a crock pot. Okay. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say I'm not familiar with calico beans. Like, is that the name? Is that a generic? I don't know if that's like a generic name. Oh, or like, word. is that a type of bean that I'm not aware of? I don't. No, no. It's just like okay. kidney beans and black okay. beans, and um, I, we we won't give away the whole recipe here. Um, mm-hmm. That's coming up later on, uh, part of the the sneak peek okay. preview kind of thing. Um, you will get one recipe today, but it won't be all of our heirloom special <laughs> recipes. Um, yeah, like lime beans, kidney beans, so like standard beans. Okay. Just in a crock pot with some meat and some other special ingredients. Okay. Just okay. Just slow cooked it for a couple good. hours. And it is so good. Add meat to anything. And yeah, mm-hmm. so you pair it with a brat. Yeah. Pair it with just oh, yeah. sitting by the lake, like listening to the waves hit the shore, just eating outside on a paper plate with your family all around mm-hmm. you. It's just... It's one of those dishes that, like, for me, like, I could eat it here. I could eat it in Mexico. I could eat it in England, and instantly I'm, like, back to Lake Tippecanoe. Right. It's awesome. Just sitting with my family and sweating, swatting off mosquitoes and listening to the lake, like, roll up next to us. So, Well, that's, like, we've we've touched on this, but all these recipes for us, they, they all somehow bring back memories or oh, yeah. evoke, like, feelings. And, mm-hmm. I mean, that's what makes heirloom recipes so special, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's more than the dish. Yeah. Is, yeah. I mean, honestly, like if you just boil it down to just the the food, it's kind of mediocre. Like it's it's amazing. It's taste it tastes great, but it's it's a mm-hmm. side. It's right. generic bean, mm-hmm. like a sweet bean side. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's the memories attached to it that makes it like insanely special for me for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. But. You want me to go? Yeah. Cool. Um so I have my grandmother's um for those of you who don't know uh, or haven't listened to episode one, I was adopted uh, at around 14, 15 years old. 
and uh, my dad's uh, mother um, always made uh, apple butter for uh, Christmas. Mm. And that was, once you hit a certain age, that was actually your gift uh, yes. from her. So everyone got two jars of grandma's apple butter. Mm. And uh, unfortunately, my grandmother uh, and my grandfather, um, actually, they passed away on the same day during COVID. Mm. Um, so this one's a little bit a little bit emotional. And so a couple of years ago, or last year, I think, my uh, aunt sent my wife a package in the mail. And it was honestly, it was a little weird because, mm -hmm. you know, like they're not super close. Um, mm. We got to the point where we just weren't going down there very often just because we were so busy and we, we had moved halfway across the country. And so it was difficult to get down there. Um, but she got this in the mail. And uh, for those of you that are watching, this is my grandmother's recipe for her apple butter on this hand towel. That is special. And I opened this up, and I'm even, I mean, I'm doing it now. <laughs> I opened this up, and I yeah. lost it because Dude, I don't that was you. just like, I mean, it was so cool. And for my aunt to include my wife yeah. on it was pretty special. It was almost like that was like the, mm -hmm. like, you're you're officially in the family, you know, right. kind of thing. So, oh my um, God. man, this, and a lot of people are like, man, why is it so, so red? Because <laughs> there's a secret ingredient in there that oh, I'll yeah. give away uh, later. And uh, I want to talk about it. Um, I do want to make sure I have permission uh, before we put it in the show notes. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I, I tried to contact my, my mom today. I don't think they would have an issue with it. Um, but, um, man, like this is just... Uh, all the guys tried it earlier. Um, mm, very so, good. Sounds like you guys really like it. Yeah. So Dude, it I am not an I'm apple butter sourdough. fan, and I love yeah, Corey's yeah. apple butter. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this is uh, this is pretty special. Um, my mom and my aunt sat down last year, and they made uh, all of us jars of it. That's awesome. Uh, they made my myself a jar, my wife a jar, and then my two girls both got jars. Mm. Um, and it was actually really cool because our neighbor, who we're still trying to get to, to meet and, and, and you know and, and learn a lot about each other we have very different cultural backgrounds mm -hmm. um she gave us a bunch of homemade jams that she made and i was like this is like one of the times where i have something to trade right uh, <laughs> and so i went in and i asked paisley i was like hey can we can we trade melissa one of your um your your jar because uh, mm. the, the girls' jars were like the little tiny jars. Yeah, you don't want to like, give away yeah. this big. I was like, can we give <laughs> your? Jar. I was like, she gave us four jars of her jams. I was like, can we give her yours since we already have you know three other jars? She's like, yeah. So mm. we were able to go over there, and that was just like a really cool. And it was the end of the season after harvest oh, from man. from our gardens and all that stuff. So that was even just a really cool right. part of that. That's but cool. like, man, like anytime I think of my grandmother's house. Uh, my grand my grandparents lived in in uh, Morgantown, Indiana, and going down to their tiny little manufactured home, you know, and and everyone's in this this tiny house, and it was always under the Christmas tree, we're sitting little baskets or little you know of jars of apple butter with little you know plaid bows mm -hmm. on top of it. I mean, you can see. I mean, this is how she did it. You know, that's phenomenal. names written on the top of it. And so that's so cool. That's uh. Pretty special stuff, man. Yeah. And, uh, Janice, some Janice Cole, Grandma Cole's apple butter. Mm. Well, too. So on that towel, like you told us earlier, like it's legit, like her handwriting. It's too, her right? handwriting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that, is, yeah. Show, show it again to the cameras here. Like super, super cool. Like little yeah. gift, and like honestly, that's got me thinking. Like I kind of want to surprise my aunts. I need to do it before this episode comes out. <laughs> yeah. Which <will> be tricky. <laughs> like I kind of want to scan. <laughs> Yeah, that would my be, grandma's recipe and like do that exact same idea. Yeah, that that would be really awesome. And and yeah. she did give. I mean, Jess does have a card too that you know nice. has it on there. But uh, you know, this was just really. This was the one that like as soon as I opened it, man, like, dude, I lost it. Don't worry, yeah, I yeah. lost it, man. So yeah, I get it. That is super cool. I guess I'll go then. You're up. <laughs> uh, mine is skirting the line of an heirloom recipe. So. Uh, like when I think of an heirloom recipe, I, I think of what you guys kind of all mentioned being passed down, you know, three or four times generations. Mine is actually a recipe from my dad. Um, but I think it will become an heirloom recipe. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, 
and a, a little caveat too, like it's not fancy necessarily, but it's just the combination of things and the memories attached to it. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's very good. And it's his fried fish, um, mm. which mm. now became fish tacos. And I remember growing up, uh, we would, we would always go up to Ely, Minnesota on fishing trips. And that was like the highlight of my year is our week long fishing trip in Ely. Nice. Uh, you know, when I was old enough, I went with, um, then my brother and, um, lots of good memories up there. And he would always, you know, we, we just hammer the fish. We'd have a, what, what, what type of fish? Mostly, uh, smallmouth, uh, Northern pike. Okay. A lot uh, of rock bass up there. Yeah, we we threw most of this back. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, a lot of smallmouth though. That was the main thing. Um, at that time, we were not great walleye fishermen, so <laughs> we tried. My dad caught some big ones, but uh, not substantial. He's a side tangent there, but very much more into the walleye now. Um, and this recipe is great with that. But you know, growing up, we'd have these big smallmouth fish fries that were just mm. awesome. It's awesome. And nowadays, he does tacos with them, nice. and it's really simple. He just uses the generic uh, shore lunch beer batter recipe, fries the fish in peanut oil, which uh, anybody here that fries fish, uh, I don't know if you've used peanut oil. It you is, told me to. Yeah. You gave me that walleye, yeah. I will never, w- with fried fish specifically, I will never do it in another kind of oil again. Mm-hmm. It That combination of the shore lunch and peanut oil just brings back all those memories of those That's, good fish fries awesome. growing up. But yeah. um he, you know, he makes this, it's a joke in our family, he calls it the special sauce. Like it was some yes. secret recipe that we all love, right? You, you put your fish on the, the taco, the homemade tortillas, and then this special sauce. And for the longest time, I could not figure out what it, what it was. Oh, yeah. I finally asked him, it's, it's literally just jalapeno ranch mixed with uh, verde salsa. Nice. <laughs> that's all it is. <laughs> yes. Two things. I may be missing one, but uh, yeah, but that's, I mean, that's it for me is just, it's one of those things and it's a good example of kind of what Andy was saying with the mac and cheese. It's, it's not a super complicated recipe, mm-hmm. but well, well, Andy's is well, yeah. well yeah. <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, like the meal itself yeah. is not like, like, yeah, yeah. like these are things that like, if I were to have just brought this macaroni and cheese, you guys would be like, yeah, it's really good. Like you mm. wouldn't, you wouldn't, we didn't know. You, would, yeah. you wouldn't know the emotional connection that comes to that. Right. The the memories. Yeah. You know, that's one of those things that I think is really cool about that. Um, we talked about like uh, it's really neat to think about like like that's an heirloom recipe in the works like yeah you don't, oh yeah you know, I love yeah. that idea th- when it was this thought of well you know did at some point in time when my you know my when my grandmother was still with her mother like making this like did they think of it like it was that mm, it was gonna be yeah. th- it was gonna be this big of a deal later on to other people like yeah. beyond them like that's the cool thing I can kind of transcend and yeah, getting a sure. chance to kind of see that before it even happens which is really yeah cool. well and and people know too Chris you know Chris's buzzword come in salady come in salady. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, this recipe is that for our family. Like people yeah. know, like a when the physical, he- yeah, when the Heinegger, like when there. the Heinegger fish fry is happening, all the neighbors are coming over, right. uh, friends, family. Like people are swinging by to get a get a little bit of Dad's fish. So yes. right, it's awesome. Yeah, well, just just the tips you've given me on frying fish have like changed my opinion on fish. Like I'm not a good fisherman, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I would love to to get more like into walleye the problem with walleye is it like it competes with turkeys so it's like like the walleye start like spawning or i don't know what like <laughs> what it, what is it about walleye we have we like a really sure. small areas here in indiana that you can even get them right we we've got a lot more in areas in indiana than you would think um but but again the problem is it's like you got to pick between walleye fishing or turkey hunting right yeah like because they For, basically happen at the same time right sometimes from it, what i understand it yeah, it really just depends Indiana. on the season because, yeah. I mean, you can go up to Michigan and get them later in the year. Um, I, my dad's walleye fishing. I yeah. feel like most of the summer. We'll, uh, we'll do so. a fishing episode. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll bring on the OKS Fisher guys. Yeah, and like, yeah. 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 I'll it's get like, some tips from That's Steve like the Heidegger. one thing I, I don't need another hobby, so I don't really <laughs> yeah. want to get into fishing, but I kind of yeah. do after tasting Colton's walleye. So. But walleye, I, I need to go back again. Two years ago, I went uh, on a walleye fishing trip with, my dad and his friend who, um, <coughs> sorry, I'm getting over a little bit of a cold here. Good. Um, his friend's dad is like the president of the walleye association or something. Mm. So, so they just put us on the walleye and right. I was eating through that walleye for a while. We caught quite a few, but awesome. I'm, yeah, awesome. I'm out now. So I, I think going back to, you know, you having something, you know, where you're saying like, I think this will become yeah. an heirloom, you know, like, 
I can think of two right now that my wife does that I know, like our friends ask like, Hey, can, would you make this? Like nice. anytime we're invited to a meal right now, Jess's broccoli salad is something everyone asks us to, you know, ask Jess to bring. But That's you know, awesome. we, we have friends that we haven't seen in a couple of years. And even he was like, Hey, when, when you come up, you know, the summer, Jess needs to make her Chipotle chicken yes. pasta, you know? And so like people are, and she is such a, an incredible cook, but I think it just like coming back to like the community now, even outside of family, but the community part to, uh, you know, if yeah. you're blessed to have a super close knit group of friends, uh, that are like family, you know, I would encourage you to share recipes oh, and yeah. to write them down Oh yeah, and put them together. Um, you know, we have, you know, Jess and I, um, hopefully you guys will get to, to come to, to one, um, soon, but you know, Jess and I do these dinners called the gathers. Yeah. Um, and we, we have, I think I've talked about it before. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll just invite, we'll put it on Facebook. Anyone can come, whether you're, you know, a single mom that just cannot make dinner on a Friday night, you've had a rough week or you're just a, you know, somebody that's looking for something to do. Just, you send us a message. Yeah. How many you're coming, you know, how many people you're bringing, and we, 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 you don't ask for donations. You don't need to bring nothing. Jess and I will prepare the meal show up, yeah. and show up and we just, you know, dine together and, and, and have a meal. But, you know, I would, I, I think that's just something that like, when you think of like meals, even with your friends, but specifically with family, like there's so many memories and emotions yeah, for sure. and smells that, that like can just bring you to a specific moment in time. You know, like Jess made me, um, potatoes and onions the other day and when you grow up poor that is a staple meal Mm -hmm. because it's it's very filling as soon as she started rocking that i instantly was brought back to my house that we were very poor you know we look like an episode of hoarders and probably worse in the summer no ac window fans in every window oh man but in that back kitchen that's basically falling apart is onions and potatoes, mm-hmm. you know, and there's just something about things like this, you know, we have in our notes and I love this quote, uh, that you added is, uh, I always say that I don't believe I'm a chef. I try to be a storyteller by, is it Jose Andres? Is that, is that Anders. That's pronounced? Anders. That's called Anders. Anders. I forget. I just heard that a while ago. And <laughs> I, I, I love, I love it when yeah. I was looking through the notes yeah. just yeah. because like, you know, like, when you think of a meal that you spent time on, and you're you're preparing for people that you love and that you care about. Yeah. You can bring if you do it right, you can bring them back to that memory years oh, yeah. later. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, so, there's something about yeah, taste yeah. and smell specifically that like yeah. really like mm-hmm. bring you back real quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um well, I don't want to cut you off, Corey, but um like before I forget, like Colton made a point to like I love the fact that you're like seeing the potential that mm-hmm. this recipe mm-hmm. could be long, long living in your, your, um, your heirloom status. <laughs> uh, my wife has recently told me a story about her grandma and her grandma used to make this like really awesome stuffed cabbage. And I, I, I forget where she's from. Like, I don't know what, um, part of the world the stuffed cabbages come from, but like her grandma apparently just rock star stuffed cabbage maker and Stephanie was about 16 or so and her grandma tried to teach her how to make these stuffed cabbages <laughs> and at the time she was just like no thanks like I don't really care about learning this recipe and you know her grandma has since passed and we got some stuffed cabbages from a friend like they brought them down from Michigan and we cooked them up and she was just like these kind of suck like this cabbage is just <laughs> It, I mean, it was good. Like, I thought it was a good meal. But, like, Stephanie knew, like, what her grandma's stuffed cabbages tasted mm-hmm. like. And mm-hmm. she's, like, really regretting not having that recipe, like, mm-hmm. specifically from her grandma. So, like, the fact that you're seeing that right now and you're capturing that memory and you're, you know, locking it in your mind and you're writing it down and you're trying to, like, pass it down. Like, yeah. that's super cool. Because there's a lot of regret. Yeah, if you... 
you know, if you have some loved ones that make some really killer dishes, like connect with them, yeah, and grab that recipe for sure. Get it written like, down, yeah. They're I like that. not going to be here forever, and like I don't want you to miss out on this really cool memory mm-hmm. from a really cool person. Do mm-hmm. you guys ever have? So we're talking about writing recipes down, and I just I just thought of this, but so my mother in law has some phenomenal heirloom recipes. Um, she's a fantastic cook. I I call her all the time, but yes. she doesn't write anything down. It's all and she makes it, it just different. in her head she, it's in her head oh and she makes gosh. it different every time oh, yeah. okay. so i talk i mean i talk about frank a lot on this uh-huh. podcast and so my brother-in-law frank is a phenomenal cook and his his buddy dan as well um phenomenal cooks they live right across the street from each other so they always run things back and forth across the street which is, i think is really cool um i'm super jealous of that sometimes because i feel awesome. like we have a the three of us have a little text group about food oftentimes a lot yes. as well but I'm, I'm further away from them so I don't, I don't get to run across the street and taste it but um they're two of the most amazing cooks I know, and they too don't write anything down. Mm. Like Frank has written down a couple of recipes and definitely has some of them, but um, you know, it's a, it's kind of like a, I think that there's something cool about this idea of like creating that thing that want, like this is the moment, this is the, the dish you're oh, going to sure. get, mm-hmm. like this yeah. is what it's going to be like. And um, you know, there's some beauty to like it only being able to have it one time. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, but man, when you, you want to make it again, so you nail it yeah. and you want to make it again, yeah. it's really tough to try to, to, uh, to ask them to write that down. Cause I, I'm the same way I get, I all work off a recipe, but then I'll change something and I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll get phenomenal feedback. And they're like, what'd you do? I'm like, I kind of don't know. I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> is, do you think it, is it something that she just doesn't want to do or doesn't have the time? Cause I, I was actually Both, just, and I, I think she doesn't care. Uh, I think I was, that, that, well, that generation yeah, just like their minds are vaults. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. my, my yeah, wife's grandma, just, like yeah. her, she was sharp as a tack, mm-hmm. like until her last day. Yeah. Like just mentally she was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And unfortunately like with all the technology at our disposal, like I don't like, I will not be there. Like, yeah. No, my I handwriting agree. is garbage. Mm-hmm. And so like, I mean, I, I can't would even love, re- I I would love remember people's stuff. phone numbers anymore. Yeah. And as a kid, I remembered all of my friends' Our phone numbers. Our minds are this is not there. trash now yeah. because of technology. Yep. Yeah. Like, we will never be at that point. Like, I need to write everything down. Yeah. And I do. Like, when I do a recipe, like, I, I have a notebook sometimes I'll use. But most of the time, it's just Evernote in my phone. Like, yeah. I need to jot these notes down because I, I want to do it again and I'll forget. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So You know, and that's something I was just thinking, too, like, a really cool gift that you could get for her, but for yourself <laughs> would be <laughs> self-serving. Mostly gift. for yourself. Get, yeah. get some, <laughs> get like a little recorder that she can yes. wear while she's cooking and, or just, maybe just you're like with her and she just, she just says it out loud and then you can write like it down a dicto- for her. A dictaphone. Or yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, or so, just you know, you know, ask her to write down like, recipes. Write it down yeah, if then. she's, if she's willing, but you know, yeah. maybe record some with her yeah. and then write, write them down. That mm-hmm. would be, that would be That'd really awesome. Well, the whole time Andy was talking about that mac and cheese, she makes this green bean casserole where she does, Mm. she starts with a white roux as Mm. well. And that just brought me back. And she makes her own like condensed mushroom Mm -hmm. soup, you know, rather than using the cans and and does everything from scratch. And oh I even helped her with it a couple of years ago and I cannot for the life of me remember. It's a process, man. Yeah. And, and like, that's the thing, like I, when you were talking about writing this down too, like this lady didn't need to write this down. So this was definitely probably written down for someone. Like doubt, yeah, I doubt she right. did that for um, herself. And it may have been even for Tommy for, for all I know, but the, uh, um, you know, it's, it's still, it's one of those things where, I mean, cause I bet she didn't, you know, this isn't the original one from this. So she just wrote this down from memory, how she does it. So, yeah, it's super cool. um, no, it's, it is, it is definitely a, uh, um, a super cool thing to get someone to write it down, but also just like, you know, going back to that, that feeling of, of like, uh, like what's so transformative. You were talking about smells and, and food is, and getting back to it. And one of the things that we have written down in our notes here is just like that, um, that like, I don't like saying the word. Commensality. Commensality. Practice um, this. I, know I need to practice <laughs> it. I just, I have you for that. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the honoring of the loved ones for it too is the other thing too. So I know that that's a big thing yeah. for my brother when he makes this. This is, he, you can't make that and not think of her. So well, I'm sure stories pop up for sure. Yeah. yeah. So. yeah. A great, that's a great cool opportunity. Point, yeah. I think it was really cool, especially as Charlotte grows up to this fish fry thing is going to be a thing yep. that's yeah. going to be there one day. And you're going to get a chance to see that now, which, yeah, you know, and we're documenting it here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and, and to go a step further, you know, like when our kids are, you know, your kids out of the house, whatever, mm-hmm. but when our kids get married, you know, I, I do have this hope that my 
kid marries cross culturally, you know, just, you know, to bring some culture in. And, uh, uh, I think that will be some really cool heritage, yeah. you know, especially as they're mar- marrying, you know, outside of their own culture and they're learning their spouses, cultures, foods and, and traditions. Mm-hmm. It'd be really cool. You know, I, I'm really into that right now. I'm learning um, a lot about that. I got my ancestry DNA stuff back. Um, uh, funny enough, I have two. Um, I'm actually I have uh, some. Uh, Buntu tribe African oh, uh, DNA, um, which really? would, I can which tell by your skin tone. Uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> Surprisingly, it's more than it's more than Irish. Actually, really. Jeez. Um, but I would love to do that. Ancestry, my, that'd be super cool. But my longest train that I'm able to find is my Native American heritage, hmm. um, and I have been able to trace that back to right now. I'm at 1500. Which is pretty amazing. There's currently in the line, there's four chiefs of the Cherokee Nation, uh, starting at, I think, like the Choctaw uh, Nation. So, like, being able to tr- trace that back, and now, like, you know, I'm, I'm looking more into, like, even some of the tradition, but the food and things like that. Because I know, like, especially with the Cherokee Nation, there's a lot going on with, like, the loss of the heritage mm-hmm. right now. And that's a big topic. And so, like... Yeah. Granted, I'm as white as can be on the outside, but if I can, you know, relive some of that history and, yeah. and my my family has documentation of a certain level of grandmothers, whatever that, you know, three times or four times, five times, whatever was on the Trail of Tears, you know, and so That's just crazy. bringing that heritage and that tradition and cultural through food is how you do that. Yeah, absolutely. Is, yeah. is the easiest way to understand those cultural uh, differences and, and, and connections that we can. Absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. I don't want to like fully like go the other direction with some light, but like this is, we are, we, we cut it up sometimes on this podcast. And, <laughs> and the, one of the notes in here that I think Holton put in here is the, if you ever had any bad heirloom recipe, so like not to just throw some, some friends and family on <laughs> the bus here, but there's some bad stuff out there too. Oh, yeah. So I was curious, yeah. do, you, do you guys have anything like that, that sticks out in your brain? You're like, Oh, it's there every year, but I just uh, pass it every <laughs> year. <laughs> so I have a, a funny story that is maybe not the direction you were going, but I, I feel like it's worth telling. Do um, it. I have a I have a buddy that uh, his grandpa or great grandpa, um, I'm getting the time periods mixed up, but you know, was in World War II, and um, their heirloom recipe for eggs like scrambled eggs is scrambled eggs with one full egg at the end just like thrown in shell and all so that you get (laughs) so you get that crunch from the eggshell and i heard that i was like this is this is weird this what is this guy talking about what's the point (laughs) um it's such a cool story though when you like hear about the history and this goes back to you know not all heirloom recipes not all of them are good a lot of them (laughs) are because you know they're passed down for a reason Mm -hmm. but some of them there's a story they're telling a story and there's history behind it Mm -hmm. and the story here is that you know, they did not have a lot of food on the front lines and they had powdered egg. So they would get one real oh, egg and real. throw it oh, into okay. these powdered yeah. eggs so that people that. would think that they are, you know, eating real scrambled eggs. But, right. and, yeah. you know, <laughs> I can see that. so I, we have, uh, oh, I know my mother-in-law is going to be listening to this, but <laughs> it's okay. Um, <laughs> man, f- fried, fried turkey <laughs> uh, after it's made, you know, the next, the next step of it that like deep fried or. Like in a skillet. Like in a skillet. Okay. Um, man, it's not the not the schnitzel Colton it's was like talking crunchy, about. Crunchy schnitzel. Man. Oh yeah. And it schnitzel. and it's I, I normally can get by with it because it's normally made with like some chicken noodles, mm-hmm. like but like with turkey. But hmm. man, dude, like yeah. every time I see that, I look at my wife. I'm just like, <laughs> right. Corey, are you about to be uninvited from next year? <laughs> oh, no. no, listen, my my mother in law and I have like the same food palette, and my wife makes fun of us all the time because like. <laughs> we literally like eat the same foods mm-hmm. and my wife is like I, I married my mom uh to the <laughs> point like my favorite thing about my mother-in-law she makes me gizzards every year for my birthday love some gizzards i love gizzards every yeah. year for my birthday yes. as long as she can find them she mm-hmm. makes me gizzards for my birthday it's yeah. awesome my uh i used to campaign hard against this one so the, so growing up my uh and my mom's an amazing cook she's really good especially with things like uh casseroles and and uh um, spaghetti and things like that. She's, she's really very good at that. Um, an amazing baker as well. Um, uh, pies specifically, her apple pie is amazing. Um, 
and she makes me a peanut butter pie every year as well for my birthday. Um, but growing up, I mean, this is my dad's favorite, so this is why we had this. But um, <laughs> and as you guys know, I have a pork allergy now. Or what? I, I probably had it then too. But um, yeah. she, she used to make pork chops, and they weren't like pork chops. Like when you think of like like I didn't know growing up that pork chops were these like thick pieces of pork mm. that people would make. <laughs> No, 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 no. These were like super thin (laughs) things that she would pan fry and they'd be so dry. Oh, no. And just like God awful, like salt and pepper and like just, oh, like (laughs) mom, I love you. But geez, (laughs) these things were, I used to campaign hard against like anytime I saw they were on the menu, I would be like, well, what if just just hear me (laughs) out? Like, what if we didn't do that? And literally did it. Bone in. Like, uh, no, they were boneless, but they were like. Man, I, she must have like found ones and cut she them. She probably took like, it, yeah, just, just to like, spread it, it print, spread it thinner. Um, and it's one of those things where I now I probably should have appreciated the situation at the mm-hmm. time, but now, oh man, to this day. But my dad loved them, so it was mm-hmm. one of those things. I mean, you slather enough barbecue sauce, you can get them down. But that That's was funny. there's yeah. an heirloom recipe that I will not be bringing. Over <laughs> <to the next laughs> generation. Yes, that well, one may die out, huh? Yeah, we'll let that one go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I mean, nothing specific comes to mind for me, but I'm, I'm sure like somewhere in these yeah. boxes, you'll yeah, find some sort of yeah. weird Jello pudding thing or something. Yeah. Oh yeah, any anything yeah, Jello based with mm. things floating things in the Jello, it. I'm not a fan of. I'd have to say my grandma's yeah. minced meat pie. <laughs> <laughs> minced meat in general just doesn't sound very yeah, good. But again, but the reason why they were was because they had they had they had to yeah. do what they had to do to make yeah. to make it yeah. spread. Across. And families then too. My mom was telling me on the way here, she's. Just, she reminded me, she's like, I got to keep in mind, like families then were much larger too. So not only do yeah, they have yeah. this problem with like scarcity of food, but it's not just, you know, you, me and the two, it's not, you know, it's not you, Jess and the girls at the table. There's six other faces there, or at least right. three other yeah. faces, like six A lot to of like eight. multi-generational Multi- households. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, right. too. So I'm just even like kids, they had a lot more kids there and they had to spread mm-hmm. it out. So yeah. Yeah. things like you can spread a lot of meat if you mince it up. Yeah. yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> and also like the availability of ingredients. Right. Like mm-hmm. today we are like insanely blessed with yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. what mm-hmm. we're able to get, the freshness of what we're able to get. Like back to Colton's, you know, the the friend's egg recipe. It's like, yeah, like that's what they had. That's what yeah. they had to do. So it's how to make it real. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. you know, like mm-hmm. you, you think about that. And it, I I remember my uncles were known for barbecue and, and cookouts. Nice. Everyone during the summer, Bobby was having a cookout and the whole neighborhood was invited and that's everyone cool. was going to get something. But I, I, it's funny you say that. I think about that now. We never had any like big staples as far as like steaks mm. and stuff like that because we were poor you know we didn't have it so it was like chicken drumstick chicken or hamburgers bratwurst mm. hot dogs you know your your very basic meat meats that yeah, you, yeah. that you would have at a, at a barbecue mm-hmm. um but man like we all lived there was six households all lived in a three block radius of each other mm. so we were all feeding like you know, whoever was cooking at that time, like I remember I'd have Being to like, everybody. okay, like we're going to eat and then Rodney and Corey, you're going to jump on your bikes and you're going to take these plates over to, to cool. Bobby and Kathy and the kids, you know? So like that was just, hmm. that was just how we did it. And so That's like awesome. what you're saying, going back to there's all back then there was a lot of people to feed yeah. uh, and having to make that go a lot further than what we have now. And we can now, I mean, we live, we're four blocks from a grocery store. We can run down the store right now. We're preparing dinner while my wife is preparing. I can go to the store and grab something that we need. That wasn't always the case. Yeah. Well, so, so on that note that your, your cousin was always known for barbecue. Have you guys thought about like, what do you want to be known for? Like what, what is going to be your heirloom Mm. recipe that you pass down? Like, what is your kid like off? He's Hank out of college Shaw's now, right? Italian <laughs> roast. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So like, what's he going to like call home? So for, like, uh, that's the thing. And like, you know, and, and I grew up, so Austin's um, extremely picky as a textured eater, kind of like Grayson, but like, you man, it never stopped. And then I, like I got Austin when he was five. So a lot of the things that Krista had to do growing up to try to keep a, being a single mom, trying to keep him happy meant that he got his way a lot. So yeah. he wasn't like really forced to try a lot of things. Um, so that kind of shaped his palate real early. 
Um, but one of my favorite things that's happened since I got into hunting is that Austin loves steak. He's always loved steak. Yeah. Now you've had to, if I, early on, I had to like nail it. You couldn't be anywhere near like what he thought was perfectly cooked, which mm. is somewhere between, uh, me at the time, medium rare to medium, but not, you know, like, but it was a dangerous game. <laughs> um, and sometimes it was like, cut him out the pieces that I know he'll eat and I'll take whatever's oh, yeah. left over. Um, but, uh, but so when we got into hunting though, he's gotten real into steak. So I would assume that if you were to ask Austin, um, for me, it's going to be the importance of actually like grilling a steak, yeah. um, and, and preparing meat, like that, how to do it properly and how to do it properly. Sure. Like uh, he likes watching it, see like come out and like start as like the red piece of meat that's, yeah. you know, just salted, maybe a little bit of pepper on. And then how does he finish it on the actual yeah. grill? Mm -hmm. And then the, one of this, like one of the things that like, one of my like favorite things to do with him to this day is, and this is how I had to eat. Like how I fed him a lot of times when we were making steak is like to come off the grill and I cut it up. Um, after we let it sit for five minutes, we're not animals. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, feeding him the pieces he'll eat. Mm -hmm. But like, even to this day when he's home, like he'll come upstairs from, from his room and, um, we'll sit there just over on the cutting board, you know, cutting up a piece of meat and just, you know, the two of us, Sharing a piece of meat right Corey, there, Corey style, yeah, just Corey eating, style, right eating right it off the cutting board, right off the cutting board. Yeah. Right the cutting yeah. board so, uh, <laughs> probably awesome. that though. I'd say probably something in the, yeah. the grilling department. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I, yeah. I see that being a really cool memory. Just yeah, for sure. Eating steak with dad off the cutting board. Yep, like that's cool. I like it. I think my kids are, you know, I think steak, like some type of venison steak or something like that. But my kids love when I make bread. Um, there you you go. know, my Paisley, my little one, she's always like, and it's so funny. I don't know where this comes from she just started doing it and now it's it's stuck is it's daddy's famous bread that's awesome and there's nothing famous about it at all <laughs> in, in any in way her world, yeah. but in her world <laughs> yeah. yeah you know last night she was biting at the bit she's like is, is it done is daddy's famous bread done i'm just like no kid like, like it's got to yes. sit on the counter for four hours like oh my it's god not, it's not ready yet and then she's like watching the oven the whole time like you know so probably i would un, i would say i don't want to say unfortunate that there's not something more staple, but I think it's going to end up being my sourdough bread. Right. <laughs> Dude, well, well, that hold on to that quote. I, I don't know if Colton has a story to share. I, I have too yeah. many stories. Too so, many stories. Yeah. What, what are you going to give Charlotte? I see. That's my problem. I I love to cook, and I I don't know if it's a pride thing or an OCD thing or what, but I love cooking things for people that they think that they won't like and mm -hmm. making them Dude, like yeah. it. Yeah. Right. So because of that, I mean, that's part of why I got into hunting in the first place is just wild game. Like one of my favorite things is my neighbors that I've never had wild game, giving them a piece of meat that yes, they end up loving mm -hmm. And Because of that, I feel like my number one is, um, like a stuffed smoked backstrap. Mm -hmm. um, oh my gosh, yeah. I did that this year and you sent us pictures, but uh, we haven't tasted it yet. Mm, so yeah, weird. that recipe will be coming <laughs> later on oh, no. probably, but <laughs> okay. you know, so any, anything on that line, but then, you know, I've got a couple, uh, you know, I've got really into smoking this past couple of years. So yeah. that ham, yeah, that ham, ham was awesome. That was good. But I think just I like a smoked, it. a smoked yeah. brisket. Oh, Cause yeah. it, it's something that you can't just do unless you get into smoking or yeah. have a smoker. Mm. And, and then third, Chris alluded to it, but, uh, my uh, walleye breading, my fried walleye. That was good. That's one. I, I think my yeah. breading is different enough. I think it's something I can have fun passing down to my right, kids yeah. and grandkids and stuff. Well, it's so. one of those things that it's simple enough, but like, yeah, I don't think you'd ever just come up with it on your own. Yeah. yeah. So teaser for a future episode. Yeah. We won't talk about it yeah. now, but yeah. But yeah, um, too many things. Like I said, that's I, a lot. Yeah. I love cooking. So yeah. Well, I mean, kind of on that vein, like I don't know that I have, like one specific thing. Uh, but I think what I would love to do is like make a cookbook for my kids. And like, mm -hmm. I think that would be just super cool. Like kind of like these books down here that are, that our family made for us. Mm -hmm. Like I want to make like, Hey, here's all the dishes that we made. Like my mom always made uh, like a dried beef casserole, super simple, super basic, but it's like that casserole. Like I just, it brings me back to like eating in our dinner mm -hmm. table, like with my parents. Um, so I want to make a book, but on top of that, I want to like challenge everyone, like all, all of us definitely sitting here, but all our listeners too, like, like let's handwrite more stuff, mm -hmm. like make cards that look like this, mm -hmm. make cards yeah. that look like, you know, Andy's right. grandma cards yeah. because it's like, it's, it's that extra level of 
personalization that mm. you'll just never get from sending a text yep. message or sending an email. Yeah, right. It's like, have your brother write that chili episode. Yeah. Eps, recipe down. Yeah. But I don't know. So, it's something going back to that, that Burr is chili email. Yes. <laughs> 2009. But you can write that on top of the index <laughs> That's card. That's true. That's true. Um, yep. I'll give Frank some homework. Yes. <laughs> but so, so on top of that, like taking it the next level, like your daughter asking for dad's special bread, or I forget what she calls it. Famous. Dad's, 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 dad's famous, famous bread. bread. Yeah. So I want to attach stories to DFB. each recipe. Yeah. So like my, the venison goulash we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. like when I write this book for my son, Gray, like I want that story, like the dad, I'm, I'm eating tomatoes and I don't even care. Like I want to write yes. that quote down. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, Gray, cool. when you were four, like you said this and like, mm -hmm. I just think that's hilarious and awesome. And like, yeah. I want to preserve that memory for him, like mm -hmm. with a recipe in a book, like, yeah. And I almost want to handwrite the whole book. Like mm -hmm. that's going to be miserable and I'm going to hate it. But like, if I could give each one of my children like a physical handwritten cookbook, I, I just think that'd be the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And there's, you're talking about handwritten and I think that's such a good idea, but the cool, it's going to look like garbage, but like it's my handwriting. So <laughs> that is though, there, there is the flip side to it. Like you just pulled those six boxes of recipes. Yeah. Out. Technology so cool. can be a cool thing for this though, too, to where, like if we were to log them, like how much easier would it be to find those recipes? And right. It would be, it's infinitely easier to find something in Evernote than to like dig through this <laughs> box. But just the, the, the history, the personality. Yeah. It's just, we talked about like the feelings that you get. Well, like this is one of the things I think that we, we haven't talked about a lot on this podcast yet that we probably should do. Like when we cook, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but when I'm in the kitchen cooking and you're cooking from something like this, there's a there's a user a physical experience. recipe card. Yeah, yeah, there's a user experience to like that with the physical recipe cards of like looking at this handwriting and seeing that. Yeah. And even like when it comes from friends and family, like I have a uh, uh, well, Nick's wife Sam, the guy, I, the the family I, I go down to Texas and see and hunt with. Um, the bread the bread that I make, which is a five ingredient beer bread, nothing crazy. She still texts me the recipe that she uses, and like every yeah. and it's still like you talked about, like I still pull the recipe up, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I got to go back through that text message a lot of times and find that too. Mm -hmm. um, and um, there's still like this like little like like personal touch to that. That's it's, yeah. a, it's a lot of fun. So um, I do think like this can add to your cooking experience too, buddy. Yeah by having some of these handwritten things and yeah. leverage that too. I'm, I'm not yeah. knocking digital. Like yeah. Yeah. we'll never stop using digital. And like, it's honestly like, like I'm never going to cook these calico beans with this recipe card, like right in front of me. It's too yeah. special. Precious. We're going to do it yeah. from a picture. Like, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll refer to the digital copy of this bean, but it's like, it's, it's that item that I have. It's a, right. it's, it's a physical tangible item. That You'll pull it up on your grandma. VR headset. Yes. <laughs> I'll put the, yeah, I'll pin grandma's recipe on the side here. Um, but just, it's, it's, I don't know if it's me just like being like, I need to collect physical things. Like I've, I've, I've got collector syndrome. Like I've got a lot of collections, uh, but just like, like having physical things is special to me. And I, I really appreciate that. And I really hope that like my kids, like the, the digital age, I hope it doesn't take over and just like, there is nothing physical anymore. Yeah. So, and that's kind of where, like, I want this handwritten cookbook to be like, I want that physical thing that I can pass on. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I want my kid to buy a fireproof safe to keep this <laughs> recipe <laughs> safe. Um, yeah. That's awesome. Just because it's, hopefully it'll be special to them. Right. As well. But maybe yeah. someday. So. Yeah. Cool. Well, any, any last thoughts here before we, we wrap it up? Um, Corey is um, going out on a limb here, and he'll be sharing this... Uh, apple butter recipe if he does get a phone call from a family member saying um he was out of line you might get a different <laughs> recipe <laughs> overlaid be, yeah, yeah. Um, i will i will say that if if i don't get the go to to put this in we'll the show bleep notes, it out and i'll share we'll, my my grandma's calico beans i'm gonna say the calico <laughs> bean, beans or we can do our uh potatoes and onions there you uh, go, recipe yeah, yeah. for sure that's that. a staple as well all right, bear with me because uh, she did not have the greatest handwriting <laughs> in the world. So Grandma Cole's apple butter, um, Janice Cole. So start with one cup of sugar to two cups applesauce in a large microwavable bowl. It's a half cup of applesauce, to six cups of sugar. So this is, I'm not sure why that top part was there because this is in a large bowl 
half cups. Is it? Yeah, half cup of applesauce, six cups of sugar, two and a half cups of red cinnamon candies. Mm. <laughs> okay. Secret ing- ingredient, so red hots. Mm. Um, that's where the color comes from. That's where the color comes I from. I got you. Yeah, yeah. So microwave on high for 30 minutes. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> the <microwave>. Wow. <laughs> How does that not blow up in the Ooh. microwave? That's what it says, right? It, says right. it does it say that. Says. I'm looking at it right now. Well, what's this? What Can you read this? Corey, have you not made this yourself? I haven't <laughs> because uh, she. this is the first time we've ever seen this. Oh, okay. okay. She never, that, I didn't she realize never it was let that anyone new to you. see this. Oh, so, okay. Like when she was making crazy. it, no one was allowed to be in the house. Oh, for real. So like it was kind of a Because secret. she was scared the she microwave was, was going <laughs> to blow up <laughs> nuclear in your <laughs> Oh my gosh. Something three. I don't know. F- forget that part. Uh, if whatever. if we get the go ahead, we might just have to post might, a picture well, of it and, and you well, can decipher. My mom recipe. my mom made it. So I'm okay. sure. She so knows. she says that she uses she uses Jonathan Apples. So or she does say IDA red, hmm. whatever that is. Um quarter and core apples and cook in large kettle until mushy. So she is saying but she doesn't say how many apples to use. As many as you need, man. So maybe you'll be <laughs> fine uh, telling us yeah. this recipe because nobody will be able yeah. to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. we'll, get, we'll figure it out. <laughs> so, uh, and then she says run it through a uh, food, food mixer uh, to get the applesauce, obviously. Um, and then microwave the apple butter. Let stand for 10 minutes and then can. So this recipe makes um, eight pints of apple butter, um, which is can she'll she said she, she uses these and this is the only jars I've ever seen her use. Hmm. So cool. I don't know where you get these. I'm assuming you can probably buy them on Amazon or Walmart or something. Like the skinny, right. tall. Lots it, of and then the short ones too, but like jar. it's like a mm-hmm. it's like a pattern on it. But she That's only cool. ever has used these. I've never seen it in another one. Well, I, I like oh. that she's got like the it's it's a classic recipe, but it's a classic vessel. It is yeah. that it comes yeah. into. Like yeah. that's that's really neat. So there is the recipe. Um, yes. I will get in touch with my mother. Yes, and uh, <laughs> make sure that I am allowed to uh, put it in the show notes. <laughs> um, but I also that's super cool. Tell I will get Love some it. of these. Um, we need to know how many apples to use. Um, yeah. And then, yeah. That's super cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. Um, so challenge on the exit here. Um, write more recipes. Mm-hmm. Uh, to all listeners who have really cool heirloom recipes that they're willing to share, write them down and mail me an index card. I think that would be super cool. Yeah. You can mail them to my studio, downtown Indianapolis. The address is 212 West 10th Street. Suite A290, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46202. Dude, if I start getting handwritten recipes from you guys, that'd be awesome. I will lose my marbles. Like, it would yeah. be Listen, so if, freaking awesome. If, I'd <laughs> say, if we, why don't we go ahead and say, if we uh, start getting some in, we will pick one to use on a future recipe. 100%. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, we'll, sure. we'll use multiple for sure. Yeah. But we'll make sure you get some merch. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, maybe uh, one of us will give you a call and uh, have a quick chat with you. Hundred yeah, percent, about it, and, cool. and, and use the audio or something. Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Um, yeah, honor honor your loved ones. Yeah, by cooking and sharing their dishes. I think you know that's how I want to be honored. You know, mm-hmm. if I give you a recipe, like don't keep it secret. Keep keep the handwritten thing secret, but don't keep the recipe secret. Right. Yeah, share it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's meant to 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 bring people together. So yeah. Bring your, fr- your friends and family together, you know, cook and eat together. And with that, we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in and um, keep cooking. I really hope we get some good recipes here in the mail. Yeah. I'm excited. It's good. Definitely did better than I thought it would. <laughs> Hold it together? Yeah. At one point, I had to look away from you clowns. <laughs> That apple butter is so good. So good. Yeah, that's-